Before we actually get into our catechism, I mentioned our transforming communities was our core value. And we're going to talk in Rome. We're going to be in Romans 13, starting with verse 8, if you want to prep and get your Bibles there early. But before we get there, I had an opportunity to do something that I've, I've longed to see this be more of a part of service. And I'd like, hopefully, this is just inspirational on its own right, but maybe inspire some of our other members who have some loving testimonies to share. I thought we'd kick things off. Marla came to me, uh, it's been several months ago, saying, you know, put, you know, like God put something on her heart she'd like to share, but there was no timetable to it. So this week kind of worked out perfectly. So I'm just going to let Marla come up and share a little bit with us this morning. And why don't we thank her in advance, because I know she's put a lot of heart in mind. Into it. <laughs> you can have a seat. Wow, well, you guys are a transforming community. like to share a little bit about the path that we were on to get here on, which was a journey that, that only could be designed by God. On um, probably about, probably the last five years are kind of a, a blur, and then I'll kind of get into that. So my timing might be a little bit off, but um, the journey started with my desire to learn Braille. And it's not easy to find somebody that can teach Braille. I found the best. <laughs> Georgia Findlay. She is the best dot lady in the world. <laughs> and I met her through some coworkers. Didn't know her before, although I was part of a Braille transcribers support group, a very, very small group that Georgia led. Um, <clears throat> So I found out that Georgia was willing to work with me uh, a morning a week, early Monday mornings at 6.30, a little blurry-eyed to start learning what all these dots meant. And what started as the goal of learning Braille and being able to be Braille certified in the state of Washington turned into something completely different and overwhelming. Um, I not only found the best teacher who knew how to teach me in the way that I learned, but I found an incredible friend, mentor, and sister in Christ. Um, back up a little bit, kind of going into this, my husband, Scott, has had cancer for 19 years. So this was kind of in the middle of it, maybe 10 years ago. And we were kind of going through a, a rough patch at that point with the cancer spreading. And there were times that I would come on Monday morning and Georgia would just look at me and just say, we need to pray. We need to pray. We can put the braille aside. We just need to pray. And her love and support just um, overwhelmed me. And we have continued all through these years with a very, very close relationship. I lost my mom years ago, and I feel like God gave me Georgia um, to fill my, fill my life. Um, so the goal was accomplished. I was able to be proficient in Braille and pass that darn um, Braille proficiency test for the state of Washington, which was a miracle. Without Georgia, it would never have happened. I wanted to quit all the time, but she kept giving me the homework and the encouragement and the love, and, and it finally happened after maybe a year and a half. It took a while, but God had a lot of work to do during that time. And we continued our friendship, and then about five years ago or so, um, was when Scott's blood cancer transformed into the brain and just turned our world upside down. And Georgia told me about a women's cancer support group here at Refuge and asked me if I would go with her to a meeting. And up to that point, I felt like I was living on an island. Um, just everything was turned upside down and, and at the same time trying to work full time and 
and do it all. And this group just came around me. Uh, Nurse Peggy, are you here? There's my Nurse Peggy leading the group on which I had worked with Peggy many, many years ago. So after all these years, reconnected with her in this group. And they loved and supported me like I had never been in my life in a situation like that in a church. And we came to the point with, Scott was going through aggressive chemo treatment with the plan to do a stem cell um, collection followed by a transplant. And we didn't know how in the world we were gonna be able to do that in terms of just, just the expense alone, my taking time off work for the recovery period afterwards. And these women came together and put on a fundraiser in this church for us. And there were people from the church body here we'd never met. We had no clue. That was, that was one of the most transforming experiences, I think, for both Scott and I to be touched so deeply by God's love through this church. So the, the always hope, that, that was a symbol that um, a friend of mine who's a graphic designer put together at that time. And um, that was kind of the, the theme of the fundraiser. And enough money was raised to pay for everything. Even the trips back and forth across the bridge, the gas, a month stay at Pete Gross' house for the first part of recovery. We were covered. We were covered in God's love. And during that time, we could just be still and know that I am God, as Jesus tells us. Um, through that critical recovery time. And there's a lot of different, the, the, trend, the stem cell collection, every part of that, God had his hand in, right down to the number of cells that had to be collected in order for him to be able to receive his own healthy stem cells. Um, the type of cancer that it transformed into was incredibly rare. Um, they could only find, I think there were five case studies. None of them were the same as his or had gone to transplant. So we, we were uh, just standing there without any solid foundation medically except for the expertise of, of the doctors we were working with. But God was there and you were there and that's the only way we made it through that and, and bring us to the point of today. I'll never forget when, during the transplant time at UW Hospital, um, James and a group from this church came, visited us, prayed, had communion with us. Talk about transforming when you're at a point of, Scott had undergone 10 days of what they call conditioning for a transplant. We keep saying they've got to change that term because it was, it was horrific. But we were blessed by this body at a time when, you know, we were at our lowest. But you allowed us to hold on to that hope and that faith that God had us in his hands through this body. I probably missed some pictures, but coming to this point, the, you know, in the last three years since transplant has been tough. The brain cancer is no longer there. It's in remission from that. The blood cancer continues to be there. So far, there's no cure for that. Um, but there have been challenges that have come along with, you know, damage that's been caused. Um, by all the chemo and transplant and everything that's, that's taken place. But Scott's a miracle, a walking miracle. And it's through you guys and your love and God's love that we're here, that he's here. 
And God's been really talking to me recently about, um, I've never really liked the phrase choose, you know, choose joy. Because sometimes when you're in the midst of huge challenges, that's the last thing that you feel like you can, you can hold on to, even when you really, really want to. So I would hear that through my life. And my mom was kind of a controlling person and, and it's kind of like you could control the world, just choose to be happy. Um, but God's put that in my life and I mean, everywhere I go, I see this choose joy. And at, at first I was really angry about it, but God's brought me to the place that we do have to choose joy. And he asks us to choose that every day. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It's easy when things are going smoothly, but to be able to pull that out because of God's love, that we can choose joy. And we just have so much to be thankful for. And we're just so thankful for you. And I can't even begin to tell all the ways that this church has touched us. Even with our dog. <laughs> After transplant, we had to wait a year because our, our dog we had before had died right after transplant. We had to wait a year for Scott's immune system to, to get stronger. What did we do? We got a puppy. <laughs> what were we thinking? I saw this puppy online and I had to work. So what did I do? I sent Scott up to the shelter to look at this puppy and put our name in so until I could get there at lunchtime. <clears throat> He really thought I was crazy because we were going to look for an older dog that just slept all the time. <laughs> but we fell in love with, with this little um, cattle dog who herded us, herded us around our house for a year, uh, but also brought us to a point where uh, with Scott's health and my working full time, um, the care was just beyond what we could do physically. And God brought another miracle, a family that we knew that lived in our area that has a farm in Monroe. And they had taken him in. He can go back and forth. We can call and have him come over, sleepovers anytime. <laughs> and so even in a small way, people from the church came and built a fence for us after we got him to keep him in the backyard. And that's just... That's just one of many, 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 many um, gifts that we've received and blessings um, from each of you. So I just want to thank you all, the Women's Cancer Support Group, Peggy, for all you do, for all these women who either have experienced cancer themselves, they're going through cancer treatment, or you're a caregiver. Uh, the support is in, incredible, and that support is church-wide. You are a transforming church. There is light. There's healing. There's miracles here. Thank you so very much. And the last thing is that as far as choosing joy, I just have to say that <clears throat> a lot of things have happened in the last month. I met a wonderful woman where I work. It's just brought amazing miracles in my life. Um, we're gonna renew our vows this summer as part of choosing joy and where we're at together and what the Lord has done for us. So thank you for being a part of that. Thank you.